Hey guys, um, breeding season. Uh, the heat is here. The sell selling season is slowing down, and so um, you know fish are starting to produce. So right now we're working, uh, or I'm working a lot on Cynodonis. So I'll show you a little bit of Cynodonis. Uh, do the multipunctatas, the vegetables, but I also do. Uh, I like to play with hybrids. A lot of people don't like that word. It's like, uh, you know, people are like, oh, it's got to be pure bread and all that. It's like, in the world today, you know, <laughs> there's quite a bit of hybrids. You know, it's the dogs and cats are, you know, in the fish business too. A lot of uh, crossbreeding just to get the colors or traits that people are looking for, right? So I'm not saying I want to get uh, extreme, but I'm, I like to play with uh, the Sinos because they're uh, they grow pretty quick. They breed regularly, and uh, the nice thing is about these African catfish, they can all hybridize, which is uh, the Sinodonis group, the African. You can get one from the Congo, Bashardi, cross it with Multipunctatus. You can get an Angelicus from the Congo and cross it with Chamdenai. So you can do a lot of these things. A lot of them are brown, you know, so it's not, you know, it's kind of not very convenient to do two dark catfish, you know, like an upside down catfish and a Chamdenai doesn't get you something unique. But if you do a Chamdenai and Multipunctatus, you get some really nice, you know, marble pattern, a lot of orange tint to them. If you do uh, uh, Rashardi and uh, Multipunctatus again, you get a, a zebra marble pattern, elongated fish, right? So it's kind of neat to play with that, but I, I'm interested in like, for example, doing uh, Eupterus and uh, uh, Multipunctatus, because the Eupterus got a couple of traits I like. It's got the long trailing fins, and it has uh, the dorsal fin that's really nice, really tall and trailers. And then the third trait that I like about those two catfish is that they're not aggressive. They're very uh, playful, almost dumb, you know? So it, it, it's a great, it becomes a great community fish, right? So uh, I'll show you guys some catfish. And uh, so I like to work on the multi uterus and then I have to crossbreed in like three or four generations. So it takes a couple of years, three years. And I'm working on the high dorsal fin and uh, the different tails on a whitish black catfish, so uh, which is really nice. I'll show you some stuff. There, another batch, of, another batch of uh, multipunctatus. So, got him going this year, pretty good. First few batch weren't great, but this one's coming up nice. Eggs looking good. Put him in the hatch here. There you go. Little tumbler. I have to adjust a little bit, a little bit more. There we go. Uh, there's a 75 gallon tank. So as you can see, there's uh, quite a few catfish in there. <laughs> so I got my banana peels in there. So they have something to eat if I don't give them enough food. So there you go. Doesn't look like much, but they're in there. They're in there. So here we have a bunch of Cynodonis, you can see them. They like to go in where the dark place is. You can see them, I just fed them a little bit of shrimp, so there's a tank full. So those catfish, uh, they take a while to grow, you know. Uh, you, you, you have to produce them, to, you have to take care of them, you have to feed them every day. They're voracious eaters, even when they're like three millimeters long, they, they have to eat all the time. It's not to eat each other. So you have to really keep the food on them. And then, you know, when you keep the food on them, you, you gotta make sure the filtration works well because the ammonia builds up from the waste. And so it's a, it's a cycle. You gotta keep doing maintenance. And then after that, they do pretty good. Uh, so most of the time they take about, to get a seller, you know, on all the catfish except the, the Petrocola, there's about, uh, Two months, you can get an inch and a half in two months, two and a half months. Petrocol is real slow grower, so you're looking at four to six months sometimes to get an inch and a half. So it's a real slow grower. It's, it doesn't matter, I've tried wild caught ones, I've tried hybridizing, you know, it, they still grow slow. That trait is a tough one, you know, when you put Petrocola in a trait, you end up getting a catfish to grow real slow. Some of the hybrids I'm doing, I call them a, like a white fin, a white tip multi. So I'll show you what I mean when it looks really good in the light. So working on that. Nice and peaceful fish, not aggressive. 
So. You see the nice white tips on all their fins? It's nice. Catfish. Little hybrids. So, just going to look at their tails a little bit. More white on the fins. Spotted tail. This is, he's got a bit of a cross with uh, Richardi, so he's got the stripes. Cross with Richardi, so he's got stripes. It's trapping pattern. We've got a lot of different fish in here that come up nicely, you know? Just a matter of like finding like patterns that you like so this one's quick this one's interesting because he's got they're feisty little guys the hybrid he's got the high fin that's a uterus straight yeah so he looks pretty good I like for the um, for the patterns you know so the, like a zebra pattern still got the high fin of the uh, high dorsal fin of the uh, So we got the big spots. That's the bigger spots. Really high dorsal, again. So it's a nice trait, you know. Bigger spots. So, yeah. I guess there's a lot of different patterns you can do. A lot of things you can play with. This is just a little sample. Yeah. Not one catfish looks the same, so it's kind of neat to see. That fish are looking good. Got lots of nice patterns in there. Feel free to uh, ask me questions if you have any ideas or things that would be interesting to work with. I hope you enjoy these little guys. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, it's, it's a challenge. Every year is a challenge. Uh, when you develop new fish, the hardest thing for me is uh, trying to come up with a market. You know, So, I'm not going to try to sell a lot of this stuff for high dollars and just trying to turn it over because right now this year production is way high. So. I might try to try to see if I can get like chain stores or larger chain stores to get them. You know, so it's just going to new fish, you know. And um, I find that the industry sometimes is kind of stagnating. Uh, not a lot of people work on new fish. I think the newest fish all the time is going to be your glowfish. You know, a lot of glowfish. And it's the same fish, it's just it's, <laughs> it's got like the glow gene in it. So in terms of new fish, there's not much new out there. You know, I mean, maybe some angelfish and things like that new collecting points and certain cichlids or even tetras but overall you know the industry is pretty much the same you know so you you, you want to try and come up with a little something on the edge and try and find something that's going to get you going and you know get a name for it you know i worked a lot on clown loaches but people ask me all the time why i don't do them right now it's it's so hard it's not like it's hard to breed it's just i can only breed them once a year so it's hard to do anything if you can only breed them for a week or two in a year then you sit on them and look at them and, okay, great. Then what? Yeah, so you, it's hard to, to work on genetic work. It's hard to work on system. If you miss the deadline or the, the opportunity to breed them, then you're, you know, park them. So that was just something I want to say about clown loaches. I still have them. I still play with them. But it's not inspiring fish. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Later.